Kiwis Gain, Key Rats, welcome to another episode of Kiwis Gain Stories. Today we have Andres Abello. A, did I say that right? Abello. He yeah, is perfect. a <laughs> thanks. This is <laughs> he's a Kiwis Gain resident for his entire life, 31 years. And he's the co-founder of Paddle, which we get to see. For those that are watching, they can see the paddle on the back and the hat, of course. And uh, very popular, very, very popular in the key. And I look forward to hear the story. So, Andres, welcome on the show. Thank you for joining us. No, thank you so much, Alejandro. I really appreciate it. I've heard a couple of episodes already, so couldn't be happier to be featured here. Uh, like I've told you before in our previous conversations, I mean, anything key related, I'm happy to be a part of. So, uh, excited for you having us on here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, let's get your Cuban's case story. So, you were born, you said you were born in Baptist. You came down here. This is pre-podcast. He told me this. <laughs> um, <laughs> so 31 years, that's a long time. Yeah. So, I mean, I was born and raised here in Cuba, Spain and, uh, I grew up with both of my co-founders in the company. We, we were the three best friends. I mean, we were fishing, diving, anything around the Island. We knew every lobster hole that there was. And, uh, still to this day, we keep a couple secret ones, but coming around lobster season, is something you got to keep as a prized treasure. <laughs> We just had a little mini season, right? A little mini one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had the mini lobster season and we have the season, the, the main season opening up now. That's awesome. I had my friend, my friend Corey Blanco. He, uh, he and his buddies went out uh, to catch some lobster and they caught like 12 lobsters each, which is the max, right? 12. Yeah. And then there were, there was a handful of them. So in total, I think it was like 60 lobsters. So oh my God, that was that's quite. Amazing quite the operation and they started right at 12 at, 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 at midnight when it yeah. starts they went with the flashlights i don't know if that's something that you do but <laughs> yeah so we've actually started doing that on paddle boards in the recent years and it's been awesome because you can get into the grass flat and we just put a couple of lights under the boards and we can spot them out crawling over the flat so it's another great great use of this equipment back here <laughs> oh that's awesome that's awesome. So tell us, tell us a little, let's normally I talk, I ask my guests about Kiwi Skin closer to the end, but since you've been in the key for so long, what is your favorite part of the Kiwi Skin, would you say? Uh, I love that it's surrounded by water. I mean, like I said, growing up here, uh, we had inflatable dinghies that we would zip around the island far before we had cars. So, I mean, everything we did was water related. Um, it, 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 there's no better place to be. I mean, what I tell anybody that, that's looking towards Key Biscayne as a potential place to live or anything, I now have two kids, so there's, uh, there's no better place to be. By the time you're 10 years old, you're walking around the island by yourself, you're able to explore, you're able to do things with friends, family that you really can't do anywhere else. It's just uh, the best place in my eyes. And how would you describe for me um, a perfect weekend? And keep skin for you the perfect weekend is getting out on the boat one day and getting onto the beach the next day <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome you yeah, know getting getting on the boat is definitely nice and when you get out there and the, and the water is blue as it can be is amazing yeah no and i mean even you look at this past weekend we had days where you, you could have been in the bahamas and you wouldn't have any different water clarity it was just the perfect weekend cool Cool, cool, cool. So let's dive in, into Paddle a little bit. Let's get that story. How, so how did it all start? First, first, what is Paddle? For those that don't Definitely. know. Definitely. So Paddle, Paddle is a self-service paddleboard rental platform. We, we have 11 different stations currently around Florida. Yeah. Uh, we're opening up another 11 this month and expanding out to North Carolina and Virginia. But Key Biscayne is where it all began. Um, we actually built out our first station, uh, in one of our backyards and, uh, my partner, Khalil Corey, being an amazing engineer, his background's in robotics, so he knows all the hardware and software components. Um, uh, we were able to put together a prototype and, uh, once we, we got everything working and everything worked out well, we, we kicked off a pilot here with the city. Um, and that really just opened it up. So, I mean, uh, really our goal was just great accessibility on the water. For a lot of people that live in apartments and or don't have a waterfront house, having a kayak or a paddleboard is almost a nuisance. You have to put it on your car, you have to take it. If you have an inflatable, you have, it's going to take you 30 minutes to inflate it, another 30 minutes to deflate it, clean it. So what we wanted to do is provide, um, provide a station very similar to City Bike or Lime, where you can quickly show up, unlock the board, use it, 
we have all the safety equipment provided and a and couple of infographics on how to use the board, how to paddle, um, really make it a fun environment and a fun experience for everybody that takes bikes. Uh, we have our location here in the beach park and it's been unbelievable. I mean, I can't tell you enough as a startup what we've learned out of this location from our hometown. Um, it, it's really positioned us for the future. I am very happy that Kibiskane adopted your project. Which was it? Which you was it a difficult process? Was the, were they easy to adopt? Your, your... Um, it was a learning process. None of us had ever had experience in in dealing with municipalities, and obviously, uh, being local here, um, people are very friendly. People really want to adopt the local business and bring it into the island. Um, being started being founded in Key Biscayne and also just continue on its trajectory. But um, it was definitely a learning process. We learned a lot between just uh, what the legal navigation is, what the municipal navigation is that we've been able to replicate and now expand into other municipalities as well. Was it easy to work with Key Biscayne? Did they adopt your project right away? Was Or did you have to no, convince I mean, them a little bit? It, it's not so much convincing. It's just showing that what you're doing is not it, it's not a backyard project, but it's a true company that you have the systems in place to really make sure that it's a, a good, safe operation. Make sure that you have the team in place to make sure it's a good operation. Um, and and we learned a lot about building our business based on these requirements that Key Biscayne had in place, which are very similar to the requirements that my city of Miami or Miami Dade County, uh, state of Florida, basically all the other municipalities really have. To ensure that you have a, a fair, safe um, operation and new concession coming out into the market. And what um, what was the inspiration behind it? What led to the creation of Paddle? Definitely. So it was uh, one of the pain points that we were having just as paddlers and, and water sportsmen. But um, when we saw Lime Bike pilot in Key Biscayne, Key Biscayne, I believe, was its first uh, public operation we immediately saw the ability to take that technology, adapt it, and make it suitable for water sports. I mean, you know, line bike, I mean, I think the main difference between paddle and line bike, I would say, is that you cannot leave your line bike. I mean, you, you cannot leave your paddle anywhere, which was, no, I remember, a big issue with line bike is that you could just leave it wherever, and that was, that was a no-go for some residents. But no, of course. And, and we actually took that into consideration when developing everything. And I mean, we know that we operate sensitive marine environments and protected beachfronts. Uh, and, and just and you look at, at our beaches and it's the turtle nesting grounds. So you have to make sure that everything that you have is very clean, orderly operation. And in order to do that, our boards come back to the station every time. So, so the inspiration for the way the technology works and how you guys run the business came from Lion Bike, right? By why paddles? Um, I think it, it's because of our passion. We wanted to get out on the water and we wanted to make a, a, a product that would solve the pain points that people currently have with large water, uh, water sport equipment, such as paddle boards and kayaks. But um, when looking at, at the equipment that exists in the market, we started with paddle boards because it's something that people have an easier time carrying and maneuvering. Uh, whereas a kayak, your standard kayak can be anywhere between 55 to 65 pounds. And that's just too heavy for most people to carry on their own. Tell me a little bit more about the passion behind why paddle, why the paddles. Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> 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 let, me, let me try that again. Let me try it again. Um, here we go. Um, so I, I know you mentioned that you have a passion for, for, for the ocean, for water sports, you know, so can you tell us a little more about the passion of, of why paddles, why the software, the technology, and the paddles? Definitely. And it really comes from mine and my co-founder's love for the water. I mean, growing up on Key Pain and doing everything that we did growing up on the water, whether it was fishing, diving, kayaking, paddleboarding, uh, just going out on the boat with the family, we, we always had a really strong passion for the water. And we saw paddleboards as a way to get people out on the water and have some of the same experiences. Um, so I myself, I mean, I, I use uh, paddle boarding to, to go fishing, to go lobstering, to um, really just get out there. Uh, I've done laps around the island, friends, and uh, I mean, just doing a circle around Key Biscayne on a paddle board on a flat day, there's no better experience. You, you'll hit the corner around Bill Bags and you just see the lighthouse, amazing views. 
it, it's truly a nice experience in that aspect. But then the wildlife that you see, I mean, we have herds of manatees that go back and forth on the beach. You have tarpon that are constantly in the channel. You'll see sharks, you'll see turtles, and it's just a, a really unbelievable experience. Um, and being able to share that with others and make the sport really as accessible as we have is, is our way of really allowing people to experience that. Um, we've also just, uh, I guess, getting involved with the paddle community with Manny Rion and Chico's Paddle Club. Chico's we Paddle see Club. A lot of, yeah, so we see a lot of people that really love it and, and seeing that passion and helping others get into the sport is also extremely helpful. Awesome. How long would you say it takes to go around the key in a paddle? Uh, we've done it in about three and a half hours. That's if you're paddling I mean, at a pretty decent pace. Three and a half hours sounds about right. Yeah, I, would, now I would recommend that anybody doing that, check the weather, make sure it's a flat day. The last thing you want to do is get caught downwind because you're going to end up hopping on a seawall and trying to find a way to walk the paddleboard home. <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, my friend Juan Van Hartz and I, he, um, he, he owns a tutoring g3 touring here in the key and um we kayaked around the yeah around the key and it was like it's not like we kayak on a regular right and then and then we decided to go and do a lap around the key it was more like a like a personal mutual dare thing you know let's let's do it <laughs> and it was it was quite the endeavor we we ended up we took four hours because we paused for 30 minutes by um by where the where the guy on the way out of the key where the guys uh, where the fishing boats come and they have this little station I forget the name yeah 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 by the charter boats by the charter boats right there uh huh we we there was a little beach there on the entrance where the boats come in yeah. to unload and and we paused there for like a good thirty minutes and then it was tough it it was it was. <laughs> You definitely feel it the next day. <laughs> and then in the paddle, you're, you're standing. How stable is, is the paddle situation? So they're incredibly stable. I mean, our boards, we, we, when picking a board that we wanted to move forward with, we actually tested over 30 boards uh, from different manufacturers, different types. And um, what we ended up finding was just the most stable, lightest board that we could find. Um, when looking at quality of paddle boards, there's always kind of a trade-off between stability, durability, and... Um, and weight. Uh, so we found the best mix of what we could at that time. Now we're actually improving uh, and finding lighter boards with similar stability, similar durability, and just consistently improving our product. That's awesome. I mean, it's, uh, like I mentioned before when we were on the phone, it's awesome to see how you have been growing. We will, we'll, we'll tap into that a little bit later about your growth. Um, before we do that, where is the paddle station in the key? That's a, a great question. So um, our station is located just south of the Beach Club at the Key Biscayne Beach Park. Um, if you're facing the Beach Club from, um, from the beach, it's just to the left. And if you're facing it uh, from the street, there's a little corner park that, uh, with a fob you can actually get in uh, that they give out at the community center. That is true. If you are a KB Skin resident, you can send an email to the parks director and they will give you two fobs so you can have access to the park. Yep. Um, so walk me through the experience. I, I myself haven't used it. I walked through that park. I walked from my house to a little lap there all the way through Key Colony and back. So I see mm -hmm. people getting the paddles, but I've never used it. So can you walk me through an experience from, from someone who hasn't done it? Yeah, definitely. So if you don't have the app currently, the uh, best thing to do is to download it beforehand yeah. and create yeah. your profile. I'm going to download it now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's p-a-d-l paddle yeah. uh the best thing to do is create a profile have the credit card information so that when you show up you don't have to do all that on site it's just ready to go and um from there either you can subscribe to a membership beforehand or wait till you're going to check out uh we have membership options as well as hourly payment options so if you want to try it only for an hour uh pricing is currently at 19 dollars an hour exactly this this not getting focused. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got it. I got it. Found it. Um, but if you don't have the app beforehand, uh, we have a QR code on the station. You can scan the QR code and it'll direct you directly to the app store or Google Play to download it either on iOS and Android. Once you have your profile set up, um, all you have to do is find the station that you're at, whether it's Keep It Scan or one of our other locations, and select one of the boards within the station. 
at which point it's going to prompt you uh, to unlock the board. Uh, the phone will connect to, to the board. And once it's connected, you can unlock it. Got it. Okay, great. And then I can just, it's, I'm sure it's fairly easy to unlock it and then use it and put it back. Exactly. Awesome. So tell me about your growth. I know from our pre-podcast conversations that you guys have been growing super fast. Yeah. So um, at the end of last summer, we had two stations. Uh, since then, we've launched another nine. And this month alone, we'll be opening another 11 locations. Wow. So it's, it, it's, been, it, it's been a wild ride. It's been amazing. Um, just working with, with different parties in the state. If you check out our other locations, what I really love is just the different environments that you get to experience. So if you had a lot of Key Biscayne, you have a beach launch. Um, it's unbelievable in terms of what you can see on the wildlife. But even if you drive up an hour north to Boynton Beach, our location there is in the intercoastal um, in Palm Beach. We have locations in Juno Beach and Jupiter. Each one of these locations are intercoastal with different environments. Um, and then once you get a little further north into Clay County and Lake Butler, it's a whole different world. I mean, you're, you're paddling on the St. Johns River, uh, freshwater environment, there's lily pads everywhere. I mean, the backdrop of the scenery is just something that you want to film a movie in. It's, it, it's gorgeous. And being able to really share these different types of environments from beaches to intercoastal, uh, areas to lakes to rivers it's just uh, really an unbelievable experience to really see all these locations when would be a, a good time to paddle like if i want the ultimate experience checking the weather as you mentioned i need to check the weather to make sure it's a nice you know smooth definitely so low, low wind, wind is the best day low wind day and what is what is low wind um anything below 10 and 10 miles an hour is good anything below seven miles an hour is great Okay, so below 10 miles is good, but below seven miles is great. And time of the day? Um, I love the morning and sunrises and sunsets. Uh, with sunrise and sunset, you're going to get to see the most marine life. You're gonna, I mean, everything's just really active. Um, not to mention just the sun coming up or going down provides a great backdrop. Okay, so when you mean morning, it's like around, you want to be on the water around sunrise you want the you want the sun to rise while you're on the water um i like to be able to see personally so once you can see <laughs> that's gonna be the best time <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay cool 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 all right all right so now we know if we want to try paddling we want to try to hit seven miles an hour winds or below and either do sun up or sun down that's perfect awesome. you'll have a great experience awesome Let's talk about popularity. I am. I normally don't do a lot of water sports. Maybe I should. Maybe I will. But <laughs> one thing I have noticed, because I do go out and I, I do walk by the beach all the time, I feel like, and in my personal friends, one of my roommates got a paddle once. So it, there's, it, I think it's growing in popularity, paddling. No, um, most definitely. And I mean, I, I, I'll segue into this, but I mean, in the U.S. alone, um, there's over 35 million annual participants in the sport. So it's, there's a ton of demand. A lot of people really want to get outside and on the water. And for the most part, they're just not able to. I mean, a lot of people experience paddling for the first time when they're on vacation. Um, but when they return home, they, they don't have the means to, to own, operate, store, transport this equipment that, I mean, is for the most part 10 feet long or more. I mean, it's pretty big. Um, yeah, it's, the, the equipment's massive. So it's just not something that you really want to store in your, in your apartment or anything like that. And by providing accessibility, not only do we really open up the sport to people who would have ever, I mean, otherwise not have taken part in it or continue to take part in it, um, but we also create access just to a wide range of different environments. Uh, by doing that, you show people that by getting out on the water, you're able to see so many different areas. I mean, for example, you look at Jupiter, Burt Reynolds Park is one of our locations. If you show up to that park, all you see is a lot of green space and a boat. You would otherwise not know that anything is there. But the second you launch from, from, um, from, the, paddle, from the paddle launch at the park, you almost feel like you just jet set it into the Keys. You're surrounded by mangroves. You're in very tiny, narrow paths that are awesome to paddle through. 
Um, and you just have a ton of marine life up there. I mean, I, I can envision people like this uh, motivating travel across Florida, knowing that now you could do paddle somewhere else and you don't have to take your stuff. You don't have to own a paddle board. And you know that the paddle system is allowing you to access places, like you said, that normally you would not be able to have access to. Yeah. So we've actually found a few of our riders that, that travel throughout the state and actually check out all of our locations. And they've paddled in Key Biscayne. They've paddled in the Keys. They've paddled in Palm Beach and Vero Beach and even all the way up to Clay County uh, over by Jacksonville. So uh, we do have people that are, are riding with us through the state and they're, they're going to keep checking out these very cool environments. Cool. Have you personally gone to all the locations? Because I have. I've, I've paddled every single one. <laughs> and your co you said you had one of your co-founders that makes the, makes the stance, right? Uh, yeah. So it, it's really all of us. We, we, we've been building these things since day one. And it's actually with all of our, our employees and everybody on the team, um, one of the first things you do is build a station. One of the stations that, that are going out so you learn every component you learn how everything works and you can really support customers on on every angle talk to me about your team co-founders is more than two right yeah so our, who, uh, my who are they is, and what how do you guys divide the responsibilities and who are they so being a startup we all wear many many hats <laughs> um yeah, yeah everyone's in sales everyone's in customer support um and and it's nonstop, but when you really look at our key backgrounds, uh, my partner, Felipe Jaurigui, he has a strong background in operations, uh, really assisting us as in having so many stations throughout the state. We have station partners at these locations that work with us that act as our, our local brand ambassadors and boots on the ground. Um, so if somebody ever has an issue, one of the station partners will actually go and, and assist them on site. Um, in addition to that, they also really promote Paddle and let people know that there's a new amenity in town. Um, my other partner, Khalil Khoury, he is uh, probably the smartest guy in the room. So he, he's an uh, engineer, graduated from Columbia with, a, with a, an engineering degree, uh, a master's in engineering and specialization in robotics. He's worked on, uh, on unmanned vehicles for Boeing, underwater vehicles. So he, when it came to waterproofing and the electronics that we put into the board, um, he was the right guy for the job. And uh, myself, my, I come from the cruise industry. My background is in strategic planning, finance. Um, and now with Paddle, it's been a little bit of everything from fundraising to sales to uh, building and anything. <laughs> and that's how it is. That is the life. That is the beautiful life of entrepreneurship where you yeah. are in the middle of, of, of the mayhem and it's, but it's good stuff. It's good problems, good situations. You're targeting the pain points. You're, you're responding to, to the demand yeah. of people using your stuff. It's the fun part. It, it's the beautiful part of growing your yeah. business. No, and, it, and we're at the most fun stage now when, um, I mean, every day is a roller coaster, um, but in a good way. Every day you're, you, you think that your day starts off one way, but then the next minute you're in Palm Beach or in the other side of the state, you're, opening a new location and it's just it's a beautiful experience congratulations congrats as, a, as an entrepreneur um from the past and still at heart and will eventually one day do <laughs> something congratulations because it's a beautiful place to be so and you have a great product here and i'm glad that it's a qb scan startup so <laughs> Can't go right. no thank you so much no my pleasure uh so Tell me a little bit about the structure of, you said that sales, right? So what does that mean? So our sales is really broken up into two, into two different areas. Um, you have sales on new locations and really on the growth into new markets, into new cities, and then also on a per location basis. So really looking at, um, I mean, the way that it starts is really speaking to customers as a step one. So at each location that we launch, we speak to customers, see how their ride was, see what they liked, what they didn't like, and use that as part of our growth strategy to provide the best product available. Um, the, the major uh, driver of our growth is really people that are frequenting these parks, they see the boards and they just uh, kind of out of curiosity, give it a try. And then uh, what we've seen is that 67% of our customers actually ride again with so we have a really strong repeat rate. Uh, people love the convenience of the product. Um, obviously, we've had some pain points along the way, 
Uh, but we're constantly evolving, constantly solving and constantly improving everything. Awesome. And do you, do you have like a handful of business models or are they all like profit sharing with the location or the municipalities? Because not, not every, not every location is a municipal and municipal or the run area or is it? No. So we, we've partnered with municipalities as well as private partners, such as hotels um, and, and resorts. Uh, we're also now expanding into into working with other concessions where uh, we're for, we'll be launching, for example, in Orlando this month with someone who is already an operator, but they don't want to manage the water sport business anymore. And they're handing it off. And still it's under a revenue share agreement where we own and operate the equipment. But um, as we as we move forward and look into new markets, we will be uh, exploring a, a different model. Great. Really one where, where local operators can purchase the equipment and manage it. I know that we're running out of time, and I thank you for your time and, and sharing your story. I have one more question for you. What is your favorite part of Paddle? So my favorite part just has to be watching our riders get out on the water, being able to go to the beach, seeing people using it, and having a great time with their families. There, there's no more rewarding experience than that. Um, it, it shows that all the work that we've put into this is, is – is really benefiting other people and allowing them to have a great experience. Um, we're very different than mobility. We're not trying to get you from point A to point B. We're really trying to get you out on the water and have a great time. And being able to see that there is really top. Beautiful, beautiful. Hey, Andres, thank you so much for sharing your story again. Congratulations on, on the startup here in Kibiskin. We're glad to have you and that we were your first. And, uh, you know, you can go with kind of that community. Thank you so much, Alejandro. I really appreciate it.